Greetings, dear families and friends of St. Kevin's. Here in the parish, we are thinking of you and praying for you and for your families. In my last uh, video message on uh, emotional and mental health, I had mentioned that in my next video presentation, I would outline some of the important practices of self-care, which is an essential part of our mental and emotional well-being. So in this presentation, I would like to elaborate on that topic a bit more. When we think of self-care, marketing and social media have invoked the sort of uh, dreamy images of taking bubble baths, sitting cozy by the fire, and drinking smoothies. And although there is nothing wrong with those rituals and the activities, we know that self-care goes much deeper than that. So let's start at the beginning. What exactly is self-care? Self-care can include a myriad of practices that we find both enjoyable and that in some way promote our physical, emotional, spiritual, and mental health. Self-care really comes down to the activities our practices we do and the approach we take in order for us to stay healthy and remain inspired for the things in life that are most important to us. It should focus on what enlivens us, what cultivates joy, gratitude, and appreciation and what challenges us to be present, passionate, and engaged. Although self-care can run very deep, the essentials are actually quite basic. As I mentioned in my last video message, we have to fill our own cup before filling the cups of others. Self-care is the way that we go about filling our own cups. Here are a few practical tips of what to focus on. And remember, these are just a starting point. First, focus on nutrition. I'm sure many of us have heard this old adage, you are what you eat. Eating good and nutritious food is essential in these times and always. So take care, choose well, and know that it is okay to indulge in those extra special comfort foods on occasion. And as simple as it may seem, be sure to drink enough water throughout the day. Second, move your body. It's absolutely necessary. Exercise has been an important part of my life and my daily routine. You may go for a walk or a hike or play sports, or do other exercises. Whatever it may be, make it a part of your life. Even moving for just a few minutes each day, especially outdoors, can do wonders. Third, rest your body and be sure to get enough sleep. We are learning more and more of the importance of sleep in terms of our 
over our health. Strive to always get a full night's sleep. Try going to bed and waking up at the same time each day. Avoid screen time for at least an hour before bedtime. And do your best to sleep in a cool, dark, and comfortable environment. Fourth, find ways to build fun into your daily or weekly routine. For many of us, this would include engaging in hobbies or simply doing some of our favorite activities. You may take up cooking or baking. You may read. You might listen to your favorite music or podcast. Or you may watch your favorite television show or movies. Incorporating fun always has a way of boosting our spirits. And fifth, maintain your social connections as best as you can. I have mentioned before that calling and checking in on a friend or a family member can make a world of difference to them and to you. Zoom dinners, and meetings can be a fun event and a great way for families to get together. Sixth, carve out time for peaceful and reflective moments. Take time to slow down and try to be at peace. Prioritize a few quiet moments for yourself. And really check in with yourself and how you are feeling. Listen to what your body, mind, and spirit need. You may wish to take some deep breaths, meditate, pray, think of a few things that you are grateful for, or you may just wish to engage in a bit of self-reflection. If we can all set aside a few moments throughout the day to just be and not be doing something, we can feel a bit more at peace. There are so many more items that we could add to this list. Likewise, there is no one size fits all for these suggestions. And it is not an all or nothing approach. Whatever works for you, I encourage you to make it a part of your day, even if it is only a small part. Do what makes you feel calmer, relaxed, more rested, nourished, and content. And do it as consistently as possible. In addition to all these practical tips, we can also look a bit deeper at self-care. At its core, self-care really involves being kind to yourself. It can be compared to being the best possible friend to yourself. Just like any relationship, Self-care involves loving yourself, forgiving yourself, having patience with yourself when you are not at your best, giving yourself permission to take a break, as well as permission to go after your dreams, acknowledging your worth and giving yourself credit and appreciation. I am certain all of us could add even more aspects to this list. It is also important to acknowledge that we are all approaching each day from a very different vantage point. 
and this will shape how we go about self-care and the time we dedicate to it for example some of us are under considerable financial strain others are grieving the loss of a loved one others are trying to manage virtual school the goal of self-care is that we set ourselves off with solid practices and really focus on them when times are good or when we are on track as a result we can rely on them or fall back on them especially when challenging and difficult times arise this doesn't mean we wait for the perfect time to start practicing self-care when all is well or abandon it when things are tough but the benefits of focusing on it in good times will definitely extend to when life is not as we would like it as we continue to navigate the pandemic we must really focus on our priorities and we must set realistic and changeable expectations of ourselves as we go about our day-to-day -day lives we need to go with a flow and fly by the seat of our pants things can change daily we have no certainty of what next the, the next few months will look like but we adapt we grow and we move forward with hope and if we implement or continue to incorporate the basics of self-care depending on our own unique circumstances we can be much better able to work through our uncertain future ultimately as you take good care of yourself this will, this will naturally flow outward to those around you. On a final note, we should all give ourselves credit for being so resilient in these unique times. And while we all seek validation, care, and affirmation from others, now is the time to give these to ourselves. Thank yourself for hanging in there and giving your best. Thank yourself for taking care of you. I really hope that some of the self-care practices I have outlined will be useful to you. Stay safe. Take good care. God bless you all.